Food is something that we and other animals think about every day. We're really lucky because we're at the top of our food chain and we have a wide range of resources to eat. But other organisms aren't so lucky. They depend on a really small range of food. And so if we affect their ecosystems, it can impact them really badly. Today, we're gonna to learn about food chains and feeding relationships. Food chains are simple ways of showing the feeding relationships within a community. They always start with a producer. A producer is an organism that can use light to carry out photosynthesis to make oxygen and glucose. Producers are green plants, algae like seaweed and phytoplankton. Primary consumers eat producers. Here, the field mouse will eat the grass. Secondary consumers then eat the primary consumers. This weasel will hunt and eat the mice. Because it kills other organisms to feed from, we call it a predator. We then call the mice the prey. Tertiary consumers eat secondary consumers. These are often top predators or apex predators that aren't hunted and eaten by anything else. For example, polar bears or killer whales. There can be levels above this, but this doesn't happen too often as energy gets lost as you go up through each different level. You'll learn more about this when you study pyramids of biomass. Now let's look in more detail at predator-prey feeding cycles. If the prey, like this mouse, has access to lots of food, then its numbers will rise as more individuals survive and reproduce. We'll use green to represent prey. But if the predator now has a larger food source, it will be more successful too so its population will increase as well. And we'll use red for the predator. Of course, now there are more predators to eat the prey, so the prey numbers will start to drop again, and they'll drop back to roughly where they started. But as the prey numbers drop, so will the predators, as there are too many to get enough food, so some won't survive to adulthood to reproduce. This cycle will continue, with fewer predators, meaning the prey population can start to increase again, and so on and so on. The cycle will constantly repeat itself if it's in a stable community. Okay, now it's time for some questions. Pause the video, give them a go, and press play to go through the answers. One, in this food chain, identify the, and then we've been given some options. So the first thing to start with is making sure you know what each one is. I suggest you number the different levels. So primary means one, so the primary consumer is the krill. Tertiary means three, so that is going to be the penguin. And finally, the producer, well, that's always just whatever is at the start of the food chain. So here, that's the phytoplankton. Two. In a stable community, an increase in the population size of prey will eventually lead to a decrease, back to the previous population size. Explain why. Well, more prey mean that more predators survive to reproduce, increasing the population size of the predators. But more predators will eat more prey, which will reduce the prey population size back down to the previous lower levels. Notice that the question says population size, so that's the language I'm using in my answer, instead of saying, for example, numbers. How did you do? In the next video, we're going to learn about sampling techniques. And please don't forget to subscribe if you're finding these videos useful. Thanks and bye!